Let's talk about zinc's influence over cortisol. Zinc is a trace mineral. I've done a lot of videos on it, but it has a huge influence over something called the HPA axis. Hypothalamus, which is in the brain, pituitary, and then we have adrenal. So we have this whole feedback loop going on. So the adrenals are controlled by the hypothalamus through the pituitary's help. And zinc supports this whole pathway. So when you take zinc, you actually have the ability to lower cortisol. Zinc also increases GABA, which is very calming. So when you take zinc, it calms you down. Well, here's another problem with lowered zinc. When you're low in zinc, you're automatically going to be a little bit higher in copper because they work together. When you have this ratio right here, it's not good because then you start getting copper toxicity or copper overload, and you get anxiety, depression, higher levels of cortisol, and it puts your body in a stress mode. So you're in flight or fight. The other point I want to make is if you have a hidden infection in your body, some people have chronic fatigue syndrome or they have fibromyalgia or they have some type of low-grade infection behind the scenes. They're under stress. They have this infection. They have inflammation in the joints, other places, in the throat. That is going to deplete a lot of your zinc and it's going to raise your cortisol. So that has to be addressed. So if this situation is going on, you need to do some additional things like olive leaf extract, colloidal silver, oregano oil to handle the deeper source of the infection so your body doesn't have to utilize all this zinc. You can get zinc from shellfish, pumpkin seeds, Brazil nuts. So the point of this video is if you have some underlying stress uh, situation or you can't sleep and you're trying to do everything you can, you may want to also include zinc. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about the foods highest in zinc. Now, why do we need zinc? Because it's a cofactor in enzymes, like 300. And these enzymes are dependent on zinc, which means if you don't have zinc, these enzymes cannot work at all. And these enzymes do a lot of things. Uh, they help support your immune system, your re reproductive system, uh, help to make testosterone, helps your skin. So if you're lacking zinc, you can have a lot of skin issues, uh, vision problems, thyroid gland, pancreas. This is why if someone's a diabetic, they do very well if you give them zinc. So as you can see, zinc is a multi-system nutrient. And when you're deficient in zinc, you have multiple organs that can be affected. Now the problem with zinc is any excess of zinc is not stored. So if you're not consuming zinc on a regular basis, either from your diet or a supplement, you're going to run out fairly quick within one or two weeks. And also if you have other issues like inflammation, gut issues, an infection, if you're on a high carb diet, you're going to have lower zinc just from that. If you eat refined foods, you're going to be deficient in zinc. Now, if you're depending on your zinc from seeds, grains, or legumes, that's going to be a problem because these things have phytates or phytic acid, which blocks certain minerals. It'll block zinc, magnesium, and even calcium. So what are the foods that have the highest amount of zinc? And I listed this from highest to lowest, but oysters have the most zinc of any other food. In fact, oysters are six to 12 times higher than any of these. Okay, so it's a massive amount of zinc. And this is usually why people consume oysters to increase their testosterone. Okay, beef liver is next, then beef kidney. Then you have crab, grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, lobster, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, cashews, shrimp, I want you to make note of these two right here, okay? So both of these have a bit of phytates. It's not very high, but it can reduce the amount of zinc right here. So these are not the best bioavailable source of zinc. So I listed this based on quantity, not bioavailability. So if I did that, I'd probably just take this shrimp right here and put this right after the lobster right there. All right, so now I want to mention uh, a really cool test 
that you can get. I use it in my practice. It's called the zinc test. And the one that I uh, use in practice is from Standard Process. I put a link down below. And FYI, I don't get any kickbacks from that product. But Standard Process has this zinc test. And this is what you would do. You would take two teaspoons of this zinc fluid and put it in your mouth and hold it there for 10 seconds. And during this 10 seconds, if you have a lack of taste, there's a chance you might be zinc deficient. If you taste a very strong metallic taste, you have enough zinc. So it's a great, great way to see if you're deficient. And I used to use it in my practice all the time. And it's interesting because a lot of people would take it and they said, well, it just tastes like distilled water. And they would hold it for 30 seconds or even a minute. And they were very deficient in zinc. One side note, if you have the symptoms of lack of smell or taste, if you have COVID, just take some more zinc because that can help reduce that symptom. All right, thanks for watching. Let's talk about zinc and try to answer the question, what dosage should you be consuming? Now, the daily values for zinc um, are anywhere between eight and 15 milligrams for adults. And then it goes down from there, uh, ages 14 to 18, nine to 11 milligrams. If you're between four and eight years old, it's five milligrams. If you're seven months old to three years, it's three milligrams. And if you're just born up to six months, it's two milligrams. Now, a couple of things you need to know about zinc. Uh, number one, you don't store it. And so if you're not consuming it, uh, you're going to be deficient, especially within about four days. Many things can prevent the absorption of zinc. Uh, number one, phytates, okay? So when people consume a lot of grains like cereal or breads and things like that, they're getting a lot of phytic acid and that's gonna prevent the absorption of certain trace minerals, especially zinc. Now, if you have GI issues, let's say you have inflammation, let's say you have Crohn's, diverticulitis, celiac, IBS, you're gonna have a difficult time absorbing zinc. So you're probably gonna to have to take more. Now, if you're on a vegetarian diet, uh, you're consuming a lot of phytates and that can block zinc. And the other factor is the bioavailable zinc. That's mainly in animal products. It's not in vegetarian products. So if you are a vegetarian, I would definitely um, take it as a supplement. Now, when you consume alcohol, you're depleting zinc. If you have an infection, you use a lot more zinc because your immune system needs zinc. Zinc is needed in over a hundred different enzymes. From my viewpoint, it is the most important trace mineral of any trace mineral. And so the best forms dietarily is animal meats like red meat, oysters, shellfish, organ meats like liver, eggs. You're going to get the best absorption if you get it from animal products. Now, let's talk about toxicity. What if you take too much? Most of the symptoms from a toxicity point of view is actually a deficiency of copper because copper and zinc work together. When you increase too much zinc, you deplete your copper. So the symptoms of a zinc overload would be neurological, numbness, tingling, neuropathies, things like that. You might feel nauseous, you might have diarrhea. You also might have vomiting. So I just recommend if you're gonna take zinc for a longer period of time, or in large amounts, take it within a blend of other trace minerals, especially copper. So that way you won't have these symptoms. And if you are deficient or going through any infection or you have GI issues, I definitely would recommend taking larger amounts, even up to 200 milligrams to 250 milligrams per day as a short-term solution to what you're going through. Let's say it's an infection. Because even though the body will only absorb seven to 10 milligrams every time you consume it, and maybe up to 40 milligrams, there's other factors that are preventing the absorption. So you might want to take larger amounts to bypass this, these other uh, barriers of absorption. If you're low in zinc, especially with a child or an infant, you can have impaired growth. Other big symptoms of a zinc deficiency would be erectile dysfunction because it affects your testosterone. It lowers your testosterone. You can have diarrhea, Many, many children around the world die of diarrhea because you're losing all the electrolytes because they're zinc deficient. Why? Because they're consuming cereals with a lot of phytic acid. Another uh, zinc deficiency symptom would be hair loss. Your tongue can become swollen. You have a lowered immunity, making you susceptible to getting a virus, loss of taste, 
loss of smell, loss of appetite. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.